Hello and welcome Velocity Banking students, Kingdom citizens, subscribers, loyal subscribers, and new people. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century, and we're going through a crisis. What is a crisis, ladies and gentlemen? A crisis is an opportunity, not a terrible event. A crisis is an opportunity. It's simply an event over which you have no control over. With that being said, on this channel, we focus on the Velocity Banking concept, the Infinite Banking concept, and Kingdom Authority. Our primary goal is to help you pay off debt, bad debt, extremely fast, acquire good debt, build wealth, build a big, beautiful kingdom, right? Increase your cash flow, build credit, good credit, AKA capital leverage in the 21st century so that you can acquire real assets that pay cash flow, right? Not assets that just grow over time, right? But we wanna add a bit of cash flow to it as well so that you have something residual, something passive, so that even in times of crisis, when you lose your job, when sources of income evaporate due to a crisis, an event over which you have no control over, you are able to adapt. Another thing on this channel that we focus on is this kingdom authority thing. This encompasses everything that you do in terms of how you view your circumstances, how you view the environment, how you view a financial concept. There are times where certain fundamental principle concepts are necessary and then there are times where we need to up our game, increase our financial awareness, financial strategies and concepts that are a bit more complex that fit the crisis that you're in so that we can produce, multiply, be fruitful, and have dominion over the earth. Have dominion over your household, over your family, so that you can operate as a king and a queen which is your birthright, according to your manufacturer who created you. So today, let's dive into the lesson. We're gonna be talking about a single mom who is my ideal client profile that I love to work with. My very first client was my mother and I helped her get out of debt, increase cash flow, lower expenses, build her credit score, start an infinite banking policy, learn about real estate investing, and she is continuing to grow even in her 50s, right? We don't stop growing, we never stop growing. If you feel like you're old, all that's happening is you're entering into a new season which you, not, which you do not fully understand just yet. So for those that are entering what we would call a midlife crisis, on this channel, we're gonna call it middle essence, okay? This is, a, this is a change of season, okay? You're entering a new season. Therefore, you cannot let the season get the best of you. You must continue to grow, continue to learn, and return. Give, be a cheerful giver. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive, right? The reason behind that is when you give, you get more than what you receive. So therefore, it's more blessed it's better in other words to give than it is to receive and that's what i want to plant in your heart as you learn these different concepts debt snowball velocity banking infinite banking kingdom authority 10x all that stuff so without any further ado i also want to just share with you some house rules if you're brand new you're most likely going to see a, a tab come up, I don't know, this side, that side, about Velocity Banking pregame work. It's just for all the new people so you understand the material that you're receiving. Because you might be watching a video and it may not apply to you just yet according to your what? Four major numbers, right? And who you are as a person and how you view finances. It may not apply to you. Or you might watch something you're like, this is perfect. Let's be careful. Let's do the pregame work so that perfect can really be perfect. Let's dive into the lesson. So here we have a single mom 
age 47, making $3,193 a month working for the government. My total expenses plus debt payments, living expenses, everything, okay, is $2,493. I have a total debt of $133,000. $1,727.32. My cash flow on a monthly basis is $700. Could be more, no less than six. So $700 is a, is a solid conservative number right now, especially in a crisis. Uh, $700 a month. We have a debt tool or what some people might call a debt weapon, um, which is simply what we have here is a personal, unsecured, revolving line of credit, calculated average daily interest, or AKA simple interest, at a 6.75% rate during this crisis, 2020. And we have an available credit limit of $30,000. To break down the debts that we have, we have three credit cards, Two of them are on 0%. Right now, as I record this video in April of 2020, these two credit cards right here that you see are going to expire in November of 2020. So we have six, seven months before that happens. So the first credit card, we owe $8,002.81. The monthly payment is $100, 0% till November 2020. The second credit card is $1,555.48. The monthly payment is $200 at 0% till November 2020. I have another credit card with uh, PNC Bank. This is the credit card that I use to run expenses, that she uses to run her expenses. So right now she has a running balance of $1,048.60. I don't necessarily count that as a debt to pay off because it's expenses. It's stuff that she pays for on a monthly basis. So all we're doing is running the bills through the credit card first, and then we're taking our expenses, not cash flow, our expenses that we have in our checking account while it sits there for say 20, 30 days or so, and when the due date of this PNC credit card comes of due, we pull from our expenses, pay the credit card off in full, and rinse and repeat. We're getting cash back rewards. Currently, there's an offer on this specific credit card that when she spends 3,000 within 90 days, she'll get $150 credit. So we wanna take advantage of that free money. We're not going to spend $3,000 recklessly, no. The way we're gonna spend this 3,000 is by simply running expenses that can be paid with a credit card. Very key word, can be paid with a credit card. I don't want to run my mortgage bill through this, uh, their credit card bills, uh, a car payment, things that would cost me money to put on that card I'm gonna avoid. So I have the expenses right here. We got $150 that we spend per month on gas, 300 on groceries, $100 on tolls per month, $140 uh, uh, the phone bill. She has uh, Verizon, so that's a phone bill. And other expenses as well. I was being super conservative. There are other expenses that she could probably most likely run through the card. She'll determine that on her own uh, throughout the months. But if we were to just add those four bills out of the 2,493, I got $690 of definite expenses that can be paid with a credit card. So before I go any further into this strategy, I wanna let you know that there are multiple things going on that this person, this single mom is going to be doing. Um, she's gonna be doing Velocity Banking, Infinite Banking, and Kingdom Authority pretty much all at the same time. So we have to be very strategic, very effective, very efficient with what we are doing. We gotta get our numbers tight. So within 90 days, um, we're in April, so she has April, halfway through, she's already spent $1,048.60. So we have the rest of April, 
2020. We have May and then June, 90 day period. So what I did was just calculated May and June, 690 times two is $1,380. Then you add on the 10,4860, $1 you get 2,42860. $2 so that means I'm only short just under $600 to hit the 3K. I didn't count the rest of April 2020. I didn't even count like really the rest of, um, uh, let's see, like all the other bills in May and June that could potentially pop up that I did not even, you know, uh, uh, mention. So I'm pretty confident that she'll hit that. That $150 credit will come in handy later on when we go to leverage other debt tools in the cycle. So that's the first thing that's going on using velocity banking with a credit card to pay my bills that can be paid with a credit card. Boom. That's done. The next thing we got to figure out is these other three debts. What are we going to do with this? Well, let's take care of the easy one. This mortgage, right? Usually when we do velocity banking, we typically copy the debt snowball method of going low to high on debts. So that's fundamental and that usually works most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's more effective to tackle a higher debt. Just simply depends on your four major numbers, your debt tool, and you as a person. So for her, we have an interesting mortgage here. It's $125,354 owed on it. The monthly payment is $750. The interest rate is 0%. This is unheard of, unheard of. I know very few people that have mortgages at 0%. The reason being is there's an organization called Habitat for Humanity, okay? So she has a 4-2, 0%. She's been living in it for five years so far. It's at 0% indefinitely, the whole term, 0%. So whenever I am dealing with a debt that is at 0% either indefinitely or for a prolonged period of time, it would not make sense, most of the time, it would not make sense for me to borrow debt that is charging me interest, let's say a line of credit, a HELOC, it would not make sense to borrow from there immediately to pay this debt. Does that make sense? So in reality, that mortgage, I'm not even concerned about paying that off anytime soon. Matter of fact, I don't even want to pay it off personally because that's 0%. I do not get any gain whatsoever other than I become an official homeowner after so many years. I would uh, increase my cash flow by $750, but at what cost, right? Do I want to risk all my cash flow going into an asset that's not even costing me any money. Plus, what is the long-term strategy of this particular mortgage? Do I want to live in this home for the rest of my life, number one? Or do I want to leverage this property? Can I potentially rent it out and get even more cash flow out of it and keep paying the same 750 and cash flow the difference, take that cash flow and go 10X, start a business, build more wealth, build more assets, okay? So very interesting strategies here that we can observe or get into. So as of right now, in a crisis, I don't see why paying down my mortgage, taking cash flow that I may need for this unforeseen crisis, just saying I don't see the, the purpose in tackling that right now. So that's 0%. It's not costing me anything. 750 a month. I can do it easily. My job's not going away. I think we're good. So we're just going to ignore the mortgage for right now. Moving on to the next two debts that we have are these two credit cards at 0%. Again, when I'm dealing with a debt at 0%, I don't necessarily want to pay it off right away because it would cost me money and cash flow interest to pay off a 0% debt. It would not make sense for me to shift 8,000 or 1,500 into 30,000 at 6.75%, not now. So we're gonna leave that alone. My recommendation over the next six to seven months is to pay the 100 and the 200 all the way up until 
October of 2020. So coming over here, here's what the balance would drop to from April to October. My balance would drop to 7,402.81 on the first credit card that I owed 8,000, and then the credit card that I owed 1,500 would drop all the way down to 355.48. Now, over that same time period, if I continue to cash flow $700, 700 times six months is is $3,600 of free cash flow that I can use to pay down the credit card before it expires. So my thought process, again, it would not make sense for me to borrow from debt to pay off this credit card right away. If I have capital, sometimes it makes more sense to just use the existing capital. Sometimes. Depends on what's going on, what we're doing, your four major numbers, you as a person. So this 3,600 is cash flow, it should accumulate over six months. I say that she pays off the 355.48 in full, and then the 7,402.81, the difference of 36, right, goes into there. The balance is gonna drop to 4,158.29 on the first card. It was originally at eight, now it's at four in October. We got one more month before it expires on interest. Then I got this uh, cash flow gain of $200 that I'm no longer paying on this, right? So that's done. Cash flow gain is now, for the month of November, I'll be at 900 moving forward. Then we have an opportunity with another credit card from Bank of America. She has an existing Bank of America credit card that is offering her a 0% balance transfer offer for a period of time. Now, I know personally that Bank of America does 3% balance transfer fees, so that's my cost of using Bank of America to move the remaining balance of 4,158.29. So when I approach November 2020, right, I can, uh, I can make my, my payment, right, so maybe it'll be down to like 4,000 or if I extra money, whatever I do, let's just say we transferred 4,158.29. This is the next move, right? So we've just been doing debt snowball technically, right? Stacking our cash flow. We're not putting any money towards debt during the period because we don't know what the crisis, we don't know what this thing is doing right now. We don't know how long it'll be for. And because I'm dealing with someone that has low income, even though they have good cash flow for low income, still it's low income. I know her job secure, but still, right? When I, if I was dealing with someone that's making 13 grand a month, 15 grand a month, 20 grand, different story, we might be doing some moves, some 10X moves, some you know, investing moves, different story, right? So when you're watching these videos, remember this is, this is per person that I'm dealing with, individually creating a strategy and then revealing it for you to learn and uh, obtain and, and learn from and view the different options that you know Velocity Banking can do in a crisis, out of a crisis, before a crisis, after a crisis. Doesn't matter, the concept will survive, it will continue to run, it will continue to be effective for as long as we remain a debt-driven country, a debt-driven society. This concept will be that tool to help remove yourself from that debt matrix. So coming back to the, the move here in November 2020, if I was to transfer 4,158.29, times that by 3%, my cost is 124.74. But here we go. Here's where this 150 comes into play. Should I get that credit of 150, right? Obviously, it'll go into the credit card and, and it'll pay down an expense or I'll get the, the gain there. But then understand that that was money, free money, that's gonna pay, that, pay off an expense before, and now I'm tapping into that same money later on. So this becomes an expense. That technically, I really didn't, it didn't come out of my income, right? It comes out of that. So I, I still have a net positive gain from that 150. So 124.74, let's say that's the cost to shift to Bank of America at 0%. Same thing. 
I would just play, I would just pay the monthly minimum payment though until that thing expires. And then we'll use the rest of our capital or line of credit to pay that off. So that's how we're dealing with those two credit cards, right? That's the strategy all the way from 2020 into 2021, right? Bank of America is gonna keep giving offers in terms of balance transfers, so I have no issue. Uh, they're great, I like Bank of America and their, and their offers that they, that they do. So that's pretty simple. She won't be using the card at all, so just be making the monthly minimum payment. The next thing that we're gonna focus on in terms of her financial goals and desires financial freedom, financial independence, things she wants to do with her money. She wants to 10X, she wants to build a business. So, something to consider is to turn this home into an asset. With Habitat for Humanity, you have to live in the home for 10 years. She's been living in it for five. Once we reach 10 years, she could rent that out. Could she not? That's a possibility. So that's one strategy there in terms of moving out of that home, putting a tenant in, collecting cash flow, moving into a new home for the same rent amount, 750, or get a mortgage for 750, her kids are gonna be grown and most likely moved out of the house so she is not going to need so much house, right? I believe she has three children, if I'm not mistaken. So she's not gonna need so much house. So she can just go into another home, live in that, cash flow the difference, maybe even take a HELOC out of the thing and invest in another property to create more cash flow, create more assets. So that's, boom, one strategy. We got one, two, three strategies going on. Now, the fourth thing, while all this is going on between October to November and into 2021 and onward, we're also going to be learning about the infinite banking concept Okay. She also wants, she desires to start the infinite banking concept. She wants that in her portfolio, in her asset, in a, a class, right? She wants to achieve that. So we've got this $30,000 line of credit here. I can potentially use a portion of this, say maybe at a max of 66%, depends, but we can potentially use this personal line of credit to max fund a policy. So chunk to IBC, then would be the next move would be to borrow, take out a policy loan. And we got three options here, either pay off debt, right? If she was to acquire any other debt classes or whatever the case may be, she can use this money to 10X, start a business, help maybe on this real estate portion side here. That could be an option or buy a car. Why do I say buy a car? In this person's particular situation, they have a paid off vehicle, and I think the car is giving her too many problems, so she wants to be done with it, buy a brand new car, finance the thing, and you know, move on. So, with that being said, people may have some mixed uh, ideas on you know financing versus leasing. I know me personally, I, I, I lease, I don't buy, I'm a business owner, I can write off the whole thing. Uh, plus, I, I don't care to own a vehicle because I know they go, they depreciate in value. So it just doesn't make sense for me right now until I get my dream car. Then I'll own the freaking thing. Maybe, we'll see. But for her situation, whatever you desire to do, hey, that's what you wanna do, do it. As long as you can make sense of it, fine, is what it is. I'm not gonna argue with people in terms of concepts, ideas. Yes, I know financing is not the best option. I get it. Some people say buy a used car, run it till the wheels fall off and then get into another one. I get it. Some people just don't wanna do that. That's fine. What I did tell her is how can we maximize on getting a financed car? Can I find another 0% loan on a vehicle? especially in a crisis like this, I'm sure you can find me a finance loan vehicle with one of these dealerships at 0% for 60 months. You know, I'm sure something's gonna be out there. I've seen it before. I've seen rates as low as 1% with different credit unions and 2%. So I know for a fact 
that she can do her homework and when she's ready, not saying we're doing this anytime soon in, in April or even in November, this might be in 2021, it just depends on when that car keeps giving her more and more problems. If it finally is done till the wheels fall off and now she has to get a, a new one, she wants to do the finance. You get a brand new car and never have to worry about uh, car problems ever again because you got a brand new car. All I'm saying is let's find something at 0% because if you found a dang mortgage at 0%, I know you can find me a car at 0% or at least 1%. At least 1%. I, I know it's out there. So she'll work on that. Now, whatever she does find, what's great is that we're using the policy to fund whatever it is we're going to do. Never lose the money in the process. When I borrow money out of my policy, it's as if I never took the money out because the money that's in there will continue to grow at a guaranteed interest rate tax-free so I won't have to worry about my money continuing to grow whatever the payment is per month out of the vehicle guess where it'll come out of the policy itself I can use the policy to own my debt to finance things right so four concepts going on at once and this person this mother is regaining her kingdom authority this mom is capturing knowledge is receiving knowledge is going to become a queen in her kingdom teach her sons how to become kings right through the information that comes from me to her into her household and she becomes an influence in the neighborhood my name is denzel rodriguez i hope you have a wonderful day god bless you and be sure to check the descriptions below to find out about my different services programs that I offer, coaching and teaching and lessons and programs and resources, free and paid resources that you can obtain to build your big, beautiful kingdom. And be sure if you're brand new, check out the Velocity Banking pregame playlist so you can get a better understanding of who I am and we can build this no like and trust factor.